Hello, hello. Welcome back to Tidbits. Christina here. Today's episode of Tidbits is about more than one work of art by one artist. Instead, today I want to talk about the rich, beautiful history of African American quilting. There's obviously way too much for me to cover in just one little YouTube show, but I think it's important that we talk about it and it, it sees the light of day a little bit more than it has. My hope is that by watching this, you'll be maybe inspired to go learn more on your own. The history of African-American quilts is almost as long as the history of America itself. Long ignored and conspicuously absent from many early accounts of American history, African-American quilting has become a really rapidly growing area of study, especially among art historians. While contemporary quilt artists create art that is true to their culture, Black women artists who use quilting as their medium risk the possibility of not being taken seriously in the high art world. This is because those Western art canon definitions and dialogues that we've talked about before have typically viewed quilting as a folk art tradition or a craft done by self-taught artists. So this is actually a very good opportunity to do some vocab words. Um, and these are sort of a big issue in the art world right now. What is the difference between art, folk art, craft, high art, low art? What are these arbitrary labels that we tend to give things? Let's take a deeper look. If I asked you to define what art means, what would you say? Where do you even start? How does anyone define what art is when it's such a subjective medium? Technically, if you go by the dictionary, art is described as the quality, production, expression, or realm according to aesthetic principles of what is beautiful, appealing, or of more than ordinary significance. Well, here there are some issues with this. Aesthetic principles set by whom? whose principles and whose aesthetics. That obviously changes depending on who you're talking to. More than ordinary significance. What does that mean to each person? Obviously you can see there are some problems with this, right? Let's move on to the next one. Folk art is defined as artistic works, often functional, produced typically in cultural isolation by untrained and often anonymous artists of varying degrees of skill. Take that with a grain of salt, I suppose. Untrained, unprofessional amateur artworks. Lastly, craft. An art, trade, or occupation requiring special skill, especially manual skill. But do you see the problem of using the word art in the definition for craft, which is used to exclude things from being called art? This is a conversation that could take, honestly, if we were in a college course, I would talk about this for a whole semester. There, You could discuss this for that long. There are no easy and clear linear descriptions for breaking down what's included in art and what isn't. Unfortunately, in the past, high art has meant white men painting. Typically these days, even if you go up to someone and say, I work in the arts, they say, oh, what do you paint? That's because as a culture, this is what has been built up and produced and exhibited in museums. But that's starting to change, which is really exciting. So today we're going to talk about a historic art form in African-American quilting. And I'm going to talk about two women in particular. The first is Harriet Powers, known as the mother of African-American quilting. She has a piece in the Smithsonian, but she was born as a slave in Georgia. Second, I'm going to talk about Bisa Butler, a contemporary fiber artist who has work on display at the Art Institute of Chicago as I'm filming this right now. So the differences between these two female artists working in the same medium, but how they're treated differently, even in how they're described today, will be the subject of what we're going to talk about. So it's kind of a long introduction, but I think it requires a little bit of that background. Let's get started and look a little further. 
While they can serve the function of keeping bodies warm in cold weather, quilts also serve the function of telling African American narratives in keeping with African artistic traditions. Quilting is a vital strand of African American culture, telling vividly complex stories of pain, oppression, freedom, and power. There is no single unifying style that defines African American quilts. They are as unique and individual as their makers. But certain similarities have been observed by quilt historians over the centuries that are hard to ignore. For instance, asymmetric patterns, large scale patterns, and story quilts, just to name a few. Made predominantly by women and passed down through the generations since the early days of America, some quilts celebrate and revive the bold patterns of ancient African culture, while others reflect on personal or historical stories of struggle and emancipation. Thanks to a growing body of research across galleries worldwide, the complex and diver diverse history of African American quilting is becoming more widely understood today than ever before. The political agency and visual impact of the medium is being embraced by a generation of contemporary makers. Harriet Powers was born enslaved in rural Georgia in 1837. She used traditional techniques to record local legends, Bible stories, and astronomical events on her quilts. Only two of her quilts are known to have survived, Bible Quilt, 1886, and Pictorial Quilt, 1898. Her quilts are considered among the finest examples of 19th century quilting. Born on a plantation outside of Athens, Georgia, Powers learned to sew from other enslaved people and possibly the plantation's mistress. Her own study of the Bible served as inspiration for her storytelling quilts. After marrying at 18 and having nine children, she and her husband lived through emancipation and began working a small parcel of land. In 1886, Powers began exhibiting her quilts. Her first quilt, known as Bible Quilt, was shown at the Athens Cotton Fair in 1886. This quilt can now be found at the Smithsonian Institution. For some extra credit, go read about the controversy the Smithsonian caused by trying to create and sell Chinese-made reproductions of this quilt. Bible Quilt had 299 separate pieces of fabric made into 11 panels. Broken vertical strips separated each panel. In West African design, broken lines were meant to startle spirits and keep evil from moving in straight lines. The panels themselves depicted Bible stories, like the story of Jacob from the spiritual We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder, a popular Bible story with enslaved people, since they related with the hunted, homeless Jacob and the latter, representing escape from slavery. The stories illustrated were chosen by Powers, a second or third generation enslaved woman, as coded messages of loss and escape. Powers was approached by a woman named Jenny Smith, a local teacher who wanted to purchase the quilt. Initially, Powers turned her down, but after her husband defaulted on taxes and abandoned his family and property, she sold the quilt for $5, $144 in today's money. Powers continued to support herself and her family by her work as a seamstress and quilter. Bisa Butler, born 1973, is an American fiber artist known for her quilted portraits and designs celebrating black life. Butler majored in fine art and graduated from Howard University. Her undergrad degree was in painting, but she has stated that she never really connected with the medium. While pursuing a master's degree in art education, she took a fiber art class that inspired her choice of quilting as an artistic medium. She said in an interview, As a child, I was always watching my mother and grandmother sew, and they taught me. After that class, I made a quilt for my grandmother on her deathbed, and I have been quilting ever since. The following is a direct quote from Bisa Butler's artist statement. In my work, I am telling the story, this African-American side, of the American life. History is the story of men and women, but the narrative is controlled by those who hold the pen. I quilt because this was the technique that was taught to me at home. I could sew before I ever painted on a canvas. My grandmother and mother, while not quilters, sewed garments almost every day, 
African Americans have been quilting since we were brought to this country and needed to keep warm. Enslaved people were not given large pieces of fabric and had to make do with the scraps of cloth that were left after clothing wore out. From these scraps, the African American quilt aesthetic came into being. Some enslaved peoples were so talented that they were tasked with creating beautiful quilts to adorn their enslavers' beds. My own pieces are reminiscent of this tradition, but I use African fabrics from my father's homeland of Ghana, batiks from Nigeria, and prints from South Africa. My subjects are adorned with and made up of the cloth of our ancestors. If these visages are to be recreated and seen for the first time in a century, I want them to have their African ancestry back. I want them to take their place in an American history. I want the viewer to see the subjects as I see them. These two women represent two ends of an evolving, tumultuous timeline. They represent the growth of a medium and the burgeoning awareness of an entire culture. While it may be tempting to oversimplify the history of African American quilts as those made by enslaved women, the reality is that African American quilts represent a diverse body of work by an ethnic group that spans all socioeconomic levels, education, geographic location, and timeline. This should challenge not only our conception of what belongs in high and low art, but what that binary even means at all. Thank you.